na mimi tumekuwa wakulima leo hapa hivi kwenye show so if you are out there uko kwa shamba with your jembe or your hoe welcome to the show we are going to be taking a look at matters of agri business here today and you're tuning in i'm just holding stems from the june cow grass june cow grass yeah so june cow grass literally meaning fungus grass in chinese which was developed uh, by chinese scientists i'm seeing here after decades of research and cultivation so what is june cow and uh, why exactly do i have pieces of your farm here with me on the show so tune in if you want to get into agribusiness i'm sitting down here with an interesting gentleman who's been able to create a demo farm as well as to get into this type of business to enable pastoralists in kenya to combat challenges which are of course from food insecurity for the livestock themselves but also food insecurity for human beings since we depend on this livestock in one way or another teddy is here with me previously on the show we had discussed matters of construction but while you're constructing your house apo kando kuna garden you also have to think about your livestock right so let's discuss livestock today with the sales manager of June cow grass technology here with me on Bia Shara Tuesday welcome to the show thank you so much right very glad to have you again man i'm so happy also to be here yeah. uh, it's another moment yes i remember the last time I was here we were talking about a different story that was construction mm -hmm. but today we are on junkao yes junkao grass good thing we're not relentless opportunity business we just have to discuss anything else that comes up next time you come here with uh, you know maybe transportation who knows yeah, yeah. we are i mean uh, developing in uh, very different ways nowadays mm -hmm. yes. yes so we need to provide these opportunities and let people know uh, how they can uh, be a part of it teddy i'll allow you to introduce yourself maybe um, just do yourself justice there and then we can get to know all about junka um thank you so much uh, first of all i want to thank everyone uh, who has been in support to junka uh, the whole team of junka um our parents and every kenyan that is out there watching i really want to appreciate you for sparing your time to actually follow up on junkao at uh, ku tv um today i'm happy to be with richard it's been a long time yes since uh, last uh, two years two ago years, yeah. yeah and uh, today having this such moment mm -hmm. it's quite a great moment for me right let's just start right away from what i've been holding here yes uh, let, let us know what this is and uh and then we can get to know about your venture okay um today i came up i came with a sample stem mm -hmm. this is a stem cut actually um, we use this one for planting junkao actually for junkao we don't use uh, um, seeds because uh, it doesn't have flowers that's the good part of it it's a hybrid from china and uh, it's one of the best uh, grass that uh, we have so far in kenya due to so many benefits that uh, junkao offers mm -hmm. yes right you're trying to transform kenya's pastoralism yes. through this how exactly does junkao fit into that uh, vision of transforming um junkao has been used in uh, actually has been grown in china for quite a while and uh, they have invested so much on junkao in terms of uh, farming uh, junkao because it's one of the fodder that is being used uh, to uh, feed livestock uh, dairy farmers uh, beef farmers actually junkao is also food for poultry mm -hmm. and also fish okay yeah so when you have junkao you actually have an immense solution to fodder all right yes you think that uh, when there's no quality grass and yeah. no good there's therefore no good future yes. for our livestock how is this Quali how, how is the quality of this grass? Uh, first of all, Junkao uh, grass technology um, has really enhanced uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, way of survival mm -hmm. in that it can survive in desert area. That's why it's being used for desertification. Mm -hmm. um, it can also survive with uh, alkaline water in uh, salty areas. You can be able to grow Junkao very well and uh, junkao can also uh, grow in very cold areas mm -hmm. so with junkao uh, it has so many benefits of survival okay. in that uh, it can survive in any areas mm -hmm. and uh, on top of it it has 
food protein mm -hmm. that is 18.6 mm -hmm. which is very essential for uh, dairy farmers mm -hmm. um, when uh, you have a CP of 18.6 mm -hmm. you look at uh, high yield of productivity for mm -hmm. your milk mm -hmm. and uh, also the other part is that it's uh, fodder for uh, so many livestock in Kenya so when you're talking about uh, junka we're looking at zero grazing Right. whereby you have your own farm, you grow junkau, so you'll be able to harvest uh, junkau and uh, feed your livestock wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, also on top of that, uh, junkau actually matures very fast. Okay. Um, within three weeks, okay. I mean three months, you can be able to have your first harvest. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in seven to eight months is when now you have junkau at a height of six meters and okay. above. All right. Uh, mostly for propagation. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So seven months there about you have your returns. How's the tilling process like? What is that hectic? Um, uh, um, uh, how, how does it go during planting? Um, actually, uh, with the uh, junkau, it's very easy to plant. Mm -hmm. Actually, you dig at least a hole of around 10 centimeter. Mm -hmm. And then once you plant the junkau, you must, in, I mean, you ensure that the buds which are very, uh, the ones that normally sprout, mm -hmm. um, actually don't face the ground, so that at least you give them room to, to sprout. Mm -hmm. And then you cover the topsoil uh, with around uh, at least five centimeter, mm -hmm. and then you add manure on top of uh, the, the topping mm -hmm. of, of the junkau. And then on top of it, after that, you will be watering in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, in the evening, at least for one year. Mm -hmm. uh, at least there will be that consistent, uh, consistency in water. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you can reduce on water because juncal um, uh, roots mm -hmm. normally go down on the mm -hmm. ground almost up to two, two meters okay. in search of uh, preservation of water right. and moisture. So this is why they can survive even in desert yes, uh, yes, areas, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And so the roots are very strong. Actually, mm -hmm. they can stretch to a radius of almost uh, four, four to five meters. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right, so maybe two meters in, four or five meters yes. uh, in radius. That's yes. a, a very good stable ground for them to yes. uh, survive. Even the El Nino that is coming up, um, right. Actually, that's one of the important things that uh, we are actually pushing for right now. Okay. And uh, El Nino is here once again. Mm -hmm. um, last year, uh, was it last year or two years ago, mm -hmm. we really suffered uh, a very big hit. Mm -hmm. We lost a lot, a lot of heads of cattle, mm -hmm. and that translated to a lot of billions right. in terms of the livestock industry. So right now El Nino is here. We be, I mean, we urging farmers, dairy farmers, uh, beef farmers, even poultry farmers to adopt planting junkau because it's the solution to um, to fodder crisis insecurity. Mm -hmm. Yes. How large or s how small of a space do I have to? I need to have to uh, get myself maybe this. I, yeah. I could be carrying home mm -hmm. with me these three stems Actually, that you got here. Uh, yeah. when you have these three junkau, because one mm -hmm. stem of junkau yields around 40 branches. Okay. Yes. So once you plant junkau, mm -hmm. you can propagate in mm -hmm. eight months. Oh. So calculate these are 40, 40, 40. All right. And 40 on these three stems. Each. Okay. That is 40, each, yeah, right. so 40 by 3. 120. 120, and mm -hmm. then each stem gives you around 16, 16 stem cuts. Okay. So you can propagate 40 by 16, mm -hmm. that's around 640, an extension to another part of land that you've not planted junkau. Okay, Yes. harvesting and, and, and silage, how is that like? Um, junkau uh, silage is uh, one of the beneficial part of uh, growing junkau mm -hmm. and uh, its technology has really been enhancing that you can preserve uh, junkau by silage making that is uh, for two years mm -hmm. and even three years you can store the silage and uh, we don't use molasses mm -hmm. so you cut down cost on molasses because most silage are, are normally used with molasses for mm -hmm. preservation okay so it's naturally as it is mm -hmm. yes i also saw something interesting here when i was taking a look at your material yes uh, june cow grass um, versus mushroom. Can you let us know about what, what that is? Um, Junkau, um, uh, actually Junkau is being uh, used to actually support the growing of mushrooms. Okay. You know very well uh, with how mushrooms develop, actually mm. from dead trees. Mm. You've uh, seen how they develop. So with Junkau, 
it can be able to support the growing of different varieties of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the important uh, uh, reason why mm -hmm. we actually pass, I mean, we're actually pushing for growth of juncao grass, mm -hmm. and then now we can move ahead in uh, planting of uh, mushrooms. I love the multiple uses yes. uh, that can bring, it's not just, uh, you know, food, uh, solving food security for yes. the livestock, but also for uh, nutrition. The human beings, for nutrition yes. as well, yes. right? Yes, saving the human being, that's one of the biggest agenda for Junkao. Mm -hmm. And it's one project that has been supported by the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. It has been um, it has been grown in every county, uh, several counties in China, around uh, one, 113 counties. Mm -hmm. So, and also the president, Jinping, mm -hmm. from China, has actually taken a mandate to support Junkao mm -hmm. for the farmers and I mean dairy farmers in China. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it much of a big reason mm -hmm. why Kenyans cannot take this initiative mm -hmm. of growing Junkao. Right. Kenyans, Kenyans should. Uh, they should. All right. Actually. They've been used to Napier grass or yes. we have been used um, to Napier grass and, yes. and the rest. So how does it fare across the competition? Um, actually the main competition might uh, be firstly on the CP. Mm -hmm. um, on average it's around 15.7. Mm -hmm. At uh, maximum um, it's around 18.6. Very essential for dairy farmers. Okay. And uh, it's also uh, of uh, economical benefits mm -hmm. uh, to the society mm -hmm. and in that it also creates employment mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, the most important thing is that there are several grasses mm -hmm. out here in kenya mm -hmm. we have basharia uh, we have uh, uh, we have the napier mm -hmm. the super napier mm -hmm. but uh, in terms of uh, overall mm -hmm. junkau's hybrid capacity actually gives more benefits mm -hmm. to as the compared society. to this other yes one. you'd mentioned earlier about zero grazing yes and i know there's also natural pasture as well how how, how is that like what is the what is the benefit vis-a-vis -vis, you know na natural uh, livestock grazing um le let's take for an example right now um you, you're not in farming mm -hmm. and maybe you don't have uh, dairy uh, cattle mm -hmm. but once you grow junkau maybe at your garden You'll have enough uh, fodder to feed that. I mean that dairy uh, dairy cattle. Mm -hmm. In that you'll be able to get milk mm -hmm. by you um, using the juncao grass, feeding mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, uh, the cow dung. You still use the cow dung to supplement back to mm -hmm. the juncao so as to make it grow mm -hmm. again. All right. Yes. When you're speaking about all these benefits, I yes. know we've mentioned a lot of the economic, nutritious benefits. Yes. Uh, let us know of the social impact, general, as a country. What can we achieve, even speaking in the backdrop of sustainability yes. and uh, that kind of uh, space of uh, uh, trying to take care of our environment? Um, one, one of the most important things I've said with Junkao is that uh, it assists mostly in desertification. Mm -hmm. So for areas like Turkana, where we have uh, so many um, issues with uh, cattle rustling. Mm -hmm. The main reason I see to cattle rustling is because of food, number one. Mm -hmm. So if we are able to plant Junkao around areas that are desert, we can be able to achieve the common goal of having food availability for mm -hmm. those cattle. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to zero graze their cattle, have enough fodder for them, that uh, yeah, that will improve even them having more cattle mm -hmm. uh, to survive it because uh, the, the 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 area uh, is actually um, is actually okay mm -hmm. to grow junkau. Right. Yes. I love that. Uh, you know, it has also. Uh, it, it solves some of those cultural problems that we have, you know, cultural yes. wrestling, mm -hmm. which is uh, brought by one of, of the children. one of the biggest challenges that we have so far. Mm -hmm. And I think with an, initi an initiative by the government mm -hmm. uh, to plant Junkau in areas like uh, Turkana mm -hmm. will be uh, one of the most important agenda. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is that uh, once you grow Junkau, we're supporting um, most of the farmers who are dairy farmers. If you have one acre of land, mm -hmm. we advocate you to plant your cow because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we'll be coming to buy that grass from you because we have uh, dairy cooperatives mm -hmm. that are working with us. Mm -hmm. So there's no day um, there'll be dead stock in your shamba. All right. Yes. We're going to hear about the business as well for someone who wants the uh, stems from you, but I'm just imagining a situation where you know we are trying to solve the issue in the Rift Valley, um, the bandit menace where we have we've seen cattle rustling and that kind of situation between communities. 
maybe you see KDF soldiers arriving there and yes. the bandits expect guns but yes. wako tuna majunkao schemes wala kutana na junkao there's enough fodder there's enough food kila mtu anabua rudi nyumbani with your stems right yes yes actually that's one of the reasons why we say junkao also creates employment another one in that if you have chunks of land you need management in the farm so one or the other it's creating employment uh, i also forgot to touch on the basis that junkao is also food for poultry so if you plant junkao you can be able to crush it into powder form mm. and uh, also have it for chicken feeds mm, so nice. that also improves the poultry business mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, meat and uh, egg and also junkao is also fodder for fish mm. so we are looking at expanding the fish industry mm -hmm. we are looking at expanding the the, the dairy industry mm -hmm. back to to its uh, level this used to be mm -hmm. because milk right now is very expensive right, right. and the mm -hmm. main reason why it's expensive is because there's no enough fodder mm -hmm. availability mm -hmm. in the market mm -hmm. so that translates to the milk becoming expensive mm -hmm. so the main agenda that uh, Junkao is going to achieve is really, really great right. for the Kenyan. Eradicating person. poverty and food insecurity in yes. all aspects possible. And also some of those social impacts are like uh, degradation control and desertification uh, control. Are you a farmer yourself? Do you pick up um, a jembe? I, I can get into the shamba. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a passion for farming mm -hmm. and I believe my passion can translate mm -hmm. into um, an idea that supports most of the Kenyans who are not even farmers actually mm -hmm. we should go back to farming mm. um, uh, in our normal syllabus we normally being told mm. English is a, a compulsory subject mm. and then agriculture is an optional but in the long run you know so much English but you you don't know much about food are you actually hungry yeah. there's no food you can speak very fluent English, but there's no food but yeah. yeah so actually I'd advocate uh, for um, the agriculture sector Mm -hmm. to take this initiative of uh, growing Junkao mm -hmm. with speed fast, mm -hmm. uh, uh, speed fast action mm -hmm. because El Nino is here and uh, we really need Kenyans mm -hmm. not to go or suffer the same way we used, I mean we faced during mm -hmm. the famine period. Right, which was last year, over 24 counties, 23 Kajiado million. Kajiado was the most hit actually right. mm -hmm. and uh, you know with them they're pastoralists, they mm -hmm. have a lot of cattle mm -hmm. uh, for beef and uh, also dairy. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at uh, the, the county of Kajiado adopting this system of uh, planting Junkao mm -hmm. so that we never know next year we might have another situation with drought and famine. But we'll be way ahead at least. We'll right? be more ahead. Mm -hmm. More ahead. Right. Yes. Junkao grass transforming pastoralism and they have a demo farm in Kajiado. Right? Yeah, we have a demo farm uh, in what, what Kajiado. What happens in a demo farm? Mm -hmm. um, what happens in a demo farm is that you're able to monitor uh, Junkao growing from mm -hmm. it being at uh, maybe two weeks, mm -hmm. three weeks uh, or maybe three months up to maybe eight weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're able to control that environment. And uh, you can also pass the Kitengela demo farm mm -hmm. whereby you'll see how Junkao grows mm -hmm. and to its level from three weeks to three months mm -hmm. and also all the way to eight months. Junkao actually per acre you will harvest 180 metric mm -hmm. tons. That is by year. Metric, metric tons. tons. Yeah. So Fire. that that harvest is very very uh, essential for dairy farmers, mm. and uh, you don't have to take so long to harvest junka. Within three months, uh, after every three months, mm. you'll be harvesting junka. So those are four times in a year. Right. Yes. That's a lot. Yes. Ministry of Education, agriculture should be a compulsory subject. You know, if we have that as our greatest resource, and yes. that's the backbone of the economy, I think more of us should learn about agriculture and less about maybe World War II. I'm just saying. And not forgetting, <laughs> Junkao can go to a span of 30 years. Mm. So once you plant one stem, you are assured for the next 30 years, it's just manure and water. Harvest. Yeah, mm. you'll be reaping harvest all through. All right. Yes. For the farmers who want to reach out as we wrap it up, um, you know, maybe they want to reach out to you for more information on this. I don't know if you're selling this, if they are available for uh, <coughs> commerce or purchase. Um, please sell yes. Junkao and the business. And before I forget, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to take this opportunity to actually um, um, direct this message to the president. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's a farmer mm -hmm. and uh, he's been into farming for a long time. Right. We know him very well with farming. Mm -hmm. He has a passion for farming mm -hmm. and uh, really advocate him uh, to take this initiative and uh, maybe we could have a cup of coffee at Status to discuss how we can help Kenya mm -hmm. achieve uh, availability of fodder. For the next year or for the years to come, 
we will have solved the issue of food availability in Kenya. Right. When you're having a cup of coffee with the, with the president, yes. your state house, yes. please allow me to bring the coffee. I'll, 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 I'll get an opportunity to also meet him. The Looking president, forward. The Looking president forward. is also the chairman of the um, African heads of uni uh, African heads of state at yes. the AU for climate change, uh -huh. and I think this is also a very good solution. Uh, actually, actually, Junkau is being supported by uh, so many uh, billionaires, mm -hmm. and actually, it's a project for the Bill Gates uh, project. Mm -hmm. It's a UN um, sponsored project, project uh, okay. for African uh, poverty alleviation. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, one of the project that is key mm -hmm. uh, in uh, most of the states in Africa. Right. Yes. Any last words that you have for us here? Um, one last word or two last words is that uh, time has come. Kenya, we really need to upgrade the technology that we are using in uh, agriculture, uh, the technology that we are using in our social life. Um, with Junkao, I'm looking at a very bright future whereby once we start planting Junkao grass, there is a lot that is going to change. And I'm looking forward to be one of them pioneers to see this change come through. Right. Ukiona past release maisha yake imekuwa sawa. Ukiuliza ni how, anakuambia ni June cow. Ni June cow. Right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for creating time I really for us this morning, man. Yes. And next time please come come through with a farmer here. Yes, yeah. I will actually be the <laughs> farmer with another milk. farmer. Yes, <laughs> I will actually come with that uh, milk that I've been telling you about mm -hmm. in uh, large quantity yes. so that we can have a very nice coffee time. Right. Yes. Thank you very much. Let's take a short break. We're coming back with Vincent and Faith continuing with conversations on what the young people in this community or in this society that we're in are doing. That was on Junkau and his pastoralism, agribusiness and also social impact. Moving on with social impact, we're coming up to get to here on under the United Nations impact projects, what exactly have has been happening and what are these young people doing to contribute back to society. Tune in, send us your questions at KUTV Kenya. We'll be right back.